Hey Hunters, Lord here, back with another Monster Hunter Wilds video. In today's video, I wanted to discuss the first real cause for concern that we have so far for Monster Hunter Wilds, which is the specs and performance. Now, of course, I'll mainly be talking about PC specs, the Denuvo anti-tamper, but we'll also be discussing the issues that some people are worrying about on consoles as well, and why it might not be as bad as we think. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. So let me just open up by saying that if you're used to 30 or 45 FPS, or if you just don't care how the game runs as long as it doesn't look like a sped up PowerPoint, that's totally fine. I know that many people are relatively unbothered by the idea of low frame rates, slightly longer loading screens, and other various performance issues. However, with modern day hardware and gamer expectations, I think that games should realistically be able to run on PCs, Xboxes, and PlayStations in at least 1080p resolution at 60 frames per second and even 4K at 30 frames per second. I think that most of you will agree that it's relatively inexcusable for modern titles, especially those coming from large developers like Capcom, to be stuttery, crashing messes at launch that you have to run on the lowest graphical settings just to get it to work at all. We've seen this lead to massive public perception issues with games like Wild Hearts, Cyberpunk, The Master Chief Collection from Halo, Fallout 76, and many others. Now, of course, it's totally possible to overcome a bad launch. You can look at games, again, like No Man's Sky, Cyberpunk 2077, Battlefield 4, and many more. However, in modern gaming, it is again really inexcusable and turns a lot of players away for good when you have a crashy, stuttering game on its launch date. Now, of course, everyone has their own subjective opinions on this subject, so let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. This video is not intended to say that Monster Hunter Wilds is dead on arrival or it's going to be a bad game. We all know that it will be a ton of fun. I just want to express some concerns that I've seen from myself and a large portion of the community in hopes that we don't have to wait for months or even years after the game is released for it to be patched to what it should have been right out of the gate. The main issue that I see here is the cost effectiveness of buying a high-end machine to run games. For example, a PS4 Pro, which could run Monster Hunter World at high resolution at 45 frames per second, can be picked up at your local GameStop for around $200, while a PS5 will run you more than double that nowadays, and a gaming PC built with the recommended specifications for Monster Hunter Wilds will cost you nearly $800, not including a keyboard, mouse, monitors, and any other peripherals that you need for gaming. These kinds of price differences are why games should run better now than they did 5 to 10 years ago. 1080p resolution at 30 FPS just isn't acceptable for a $70 plus game to run on a $500 plus piece of hardware, at least not for me and many others in the community. Now first, let's go ahead and look at the recommended PC hardware for Monster Hunter Wilds. To run the game at 1080p and 60fps, which is again the basic standard for most modern titles, they're recommending Windows 10, duh. Then for CPUs, you have either your Intel offerings, which are an i5-11600K or an i5-12400, and for AMD CPUs, either a Ryzen 5 3600X or a Ryzen 5 5500. As you can see in the CPU comparison here, all of these have been available for at least two-ish years and aren't too expensive. However, with Dragon's Dogma 2, a very recent Capcom title, we noticed that it was extremely CPU intensive. This is further exacerbated by the Denuvo anti-tamper, but we'll touch more on that later. Since Dragon's Dogma 2 relied heavily on your CPU to process in-game behavior as well as the AI aspects of all the NPCs, there were striking performance drops early on in its launch. Now, of course, much of this was fixed as updates were rolled out over the months, but the game still struggles in areas where there are many NPCs about, especially in cities like Vernworth. Even outside of these large cities, many players are still running into performance issues with frame rate, stuttering, pop-in, and other performance issues. With Monster Hunter Wilds likely to have much of the same CPU-intensive workload, where we're going to have multiple hub areas, large groups of monsters spread across massive open world maps, as well as the addition of heavily AI intensive NPC support hunters, my hope is that Capcom is able to learn from Dragon's Dogma 2 and that CPU utilization won't turn into an issue in Monster Hunter Wilds like it was in Dragon's Dogma 2. 
Now, the recommended amount of RAM is nothing too unfamiliar, especially for a game like Wilds at a modest 16 gigabytes. Now, the graphics cards recommended are either an RTX 2070 Super or an RTX 4060 for the NVIDIA offerings, or a Radeon RX 6700 XT for the AMD graphics card. Now, each graphics card should have 8 gigabytes of VRAM, which again is pretty standard, but seeing GPUs that are only 1 to 3 years old being required to run a modest 1080p resolution and 60 frames per second on medium settings with frame generation enabled is a bit concerning, considering that the PC standard is much more likely around being able to run 1440p, which is about 2K resolution, at between 60 and 120 frames per second minimum, especially if you're only running medium graphics settings. Since we've talked about frame generation, for those of you who don't know, frame generation is basically your graphics card looks at two frames and it tries to guess what a picture would look like in between those frames, then generates that frame artificially. This allows you to effectively use something that would only run in say 30 frames per second and look like it's pushing out 60. However, this can cause input and lag issues as the GPU has to render those two frames, then process the frame it will generate in between them, and then generate that frame and display it in between those other two frames. While this is an incredible feat of engineering, it can actually cause a decent increase in input lag, which is the time between when you press a button and when the action for that button is actually performed, which could cause you to get hit, miss an attack, miss a dodge, and even more. Now this may not seem noticeable to most people, but for those of you who've played specifically PvP first person shooter games, you'll know that the difference between 50 milliseconds of delay and 80 milliseconds of delay is quite hefty and can quite literally be the deciding factor in winning or losing a gunfight. Now the best thing that I noticed about these specifications is that the game will take up less than 140 gigabytes on a solid state drive, which is nice where many modern titles can push up over the 150 to 200 gigabyte mark for storage. For example, in my Steam library I have a racing game, Forza Horizon 5, and that alone takes up 175 gigabytes. However, this 140 gigabyte mark is still a hefty increase from the roughly 60 gigabytes that you needed for Monster Hunter World and the around 35 that Monster Hunter Rise took up. Overall though, this really isn't that bad for the size and scale of Base Wild's maps and features. Now, while the recommended specs are a little worrisome, overall they're not too terrible if you're comfortable playing in 1080p at between 30 and 60 frames per second. However, the minimum specs are even more alarming. Coming in at a recommended 1080p upscaled and 30 frames per second while on the lowest graphic settings is already a shock to many people's system. Now, upscaling is very similar to frame generation where the game takes a lower resolution image, say 720p, and tries to guess what it would look like at the higher resolution, like 1080p. While it will look better than base 720p, it's a noticeably different image from a true 1080p resolution. To build this PC, it comes out to around six or $700 as well. So seeing the fact that you need to run at such low end settings, resolutions, and frame rate, is just not good. You can definitely get secondhand parts for cheaper, but you're still spending about as much as a new PS5 would cost anyway, which can run the game in full 4K resolution on high graphic settings and at 30 FPS anyway. Having to pay up to or in excess of $500 just to run games at the same level as a PS4, which came out over a decade ago, is not where you want your 2025 title to be sitting. You run the risk of turning away new players who either don't want to spend that kind of money for, let's be honest, a low-end mid-performance on their expensive PCs and consoles, as well as causing players who do have those kind of mid-tier PCs to potentially return the game when it runs or looks like crap relative to what other games can run and look like. Now this also doesn't take into effect the addition of the Denuvo anti-tamper that is being added onto the PC version of Monster Hunter Wilds. Now, while there's a lot of varying information about whether or not Denuvo is the main cause of performance issues in PC gaming, many people have testified across multiple games spanning many years that using a cracked version of their game which bypasses Denuvo led to between a 15-30% to 30 decrease in CPU utilization 
up to 50% increases in frames per second, and the ability to even jump up a level in their graphics settings, say from low to medium or medium to high. A game with Denuvo ends up eating up far more resources within your system than a game without it, causing these games to have considerable performance hits in frame rate, graphical fidelity, and even loading screen times. Now, of course, as your PC becomes more high end, these performance hits are not as noticeable, but then we're talking about spending in excess of one to two thousand dollars on a PC which most people just won't do for various reasons. Now, of course, that is completely leaving out the security concerns that have plagued Denuvo and other anti-cheats, which I won't get into depth about in this video. However, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to learn more about why Denuvo could lead to people being able to steal information directly from your PC. Now, I did say I'd discuss consoles a little bit, so here's that portion of the video. Now, like we said earlier, running a game at 4K and 30 frames per second is right at the expected standard for modern gaming, which Monster Hunter Wilds does do, according to many playtesters who have been hands-on with the various demos at different game shows around the world. However, many people will care either more about graphics or more about performance. Now, what I've spoken about already and I'm sticking with is giving players an option to run either better graphics at a lower frame rate, or a better frame rate with slightly less graphical fidelity, or a mixture of the two in a balanced mode. Now, many modern console titles do already come with this option, so I'd really like to see Capcom have something like this implemented into Monster Hunter Wilds. Again, if you're going to be dropping $450 or more on a console, and then $70 to $110 on Monster Hunter Wilds, you want that to run well. That's a huge investment for anyone. Of course, everyone loves good graphics, but if your game runs like shit, then you really don't care how good it looks. Again, no matter which side of things you fall on, if your game doesn't run well, if it constantly crashes or goes offline, you're not going to have a very good experience. Now, of course, it should run fine on your next-gen consoles, but it needs to run significantly better than previous generation games to live up to the massive price tags of both the game itself and the console that you'll buy to play it on. With the incredible hype around Monster Hunter Wilds, I'd hate to see it fall off just due to performance problems. The game will be great, it will be fun, but to many consumers, that won't matter if they have to spend hundreds of dollars on upgrades to their PC or console, or if the game just doesn't run on what they already own. Of course, it is entirely possible that all of these specs and numbers are just Capcom being incredibly conservative, but until we can get hands-on with a public demo of Wilds, we can't be certain. With that said, the performance being the only real cause for concern so far for Monster Hunter Wilds is extremely promising for how this game is going to be. I know that it's going to be a great experience, but they really need to nail the performance on launch for it to get the reception that it deserves from the consumers. That's of course why I'm discussing this now. This is not to bash the game or be all, Oh, Wilds is gonna be crap, man, it's gonna suck, it's not gonna run, you know. I want this game to succeed more than anything, but as we know from many recent titles, nothing turns players away from or against a game like bad performance on launch. There's still plenty of time for Capcom to optimize the game and its performance, so I'll certainly be keeping my fingers crossed and maintaining my high hopes for Monster Hunter Wilds. So guys, what are your thoughts on the specs, the performance, different people's concerns for Monster Hunter Wilds? Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. If you did enjoy today's video, be sure to leave a like down below, subscribe for more Monster Hunter content just like this. This channel is going to be the best place to find sets, guides, tutorials, hidden facts, and much, much more for Monster Hunter Wilds. And the best way to make sure you never miss an upload is, of course, being subscribed. With all that being said, I want to thank you guys for listening to my kind of incoherent ramblings today. I wish you all a good day and happy hunting.